Good afternoon, everybody, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. This is Fantasy Football Hush Reality. Uh, I am your host, Greg Romero Wilson. I'm broadcasting live right now on Face Book, the booklet de Faches. Um, where I'm hoping we're going to get some lineup questions. Hello, John Johnson. Welcome to the show. Regular watcher. Thank you for joining me, man. Today we're talking lineup questions, questions you have going into your weekend. And here's the thing about lineup questions. Uh, it's always easier to see absolutely what someone else should do. And this doesn't just apply to fantasy football. This applies in life. You know how so many times in your life you feel like you're just wandering through life, you don't know what the fuck you're doing, and that, but someone else, they're like, I don't know what I'm doing, and it's so obvious to you, because you have third-person perspective, to look at them and go, here's what you're doing wrong, you keep making this same fucking mistake over and over again, and if you just stop doing that, and stop being with that kind of person, then your life would turn around, you know, you need to just straighten this thing out, it's always so easy to look at somebody else's situation and know exactly what to do with perfect certainty. But for ourselves, it's always so difficult to, to really, to make the tough decisions. It's hard for us to have, because you can't have third person perspective about yourself, unless of course you're watching yourself on tape and then you'll be like, okay, now I look fucking stupid, but then you're looking at yourself past tense. So we're talking present tense, we're talking right now, we're talking this weekend. Let's start by talking about last night's game and I'd like to go over some of the things that I said were going to happen in last night's game that turned out to be absolutely true. Now, I was wrong about the winner. I did say it was going to be very high scoring. I predicted a score of 34-31. And, of course, what did it end up at? 38-31. Um, uh, so I was very close. Hello, Matt Jones. Thank you for tuning in. So I was very, very close on that uh, in terms of the final score. But I thought it was going to be Minnesota because I knew they were so upset about last week. And let's be honest, they came out and they played an incredible fucking game. But this Rams team at home, they were not going to... I mean, Jared Goff... When are we going to start seeing Jared Goff as an elite quarterback? You know, it's not like with Mahomes, where Mahomes is brand new, and so you're kind of like, oh, I don't know, is he going to keep this up? Whereas Goff, you know, this is now uh, his third season, I think, and his second season of being really, really good. So... Uh, so this isn't, you know, like, will he, won't he? Like, I think the evidence is now there. I think it's now empirical evidence. Chris Shaw, thank you for joining the show. I think it's now empirical that Jared Goff is in a situation, and you watch that. Yes, John Johnson, that's exactly right. That dime that he dropped, and I think it was to Cooper Cup in the corner, the, in, oh, he was double covered. And I mean, it was he was dropping dimes all night. And it's not like you can even watch that game and say that was one great pass. He had three of those where you he beat coverage that heretofore last season was considered the number one defense. Now, and, and that's ultimately uh, 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 what it comes down to is what is going on with the Minnesota defense. This is a defense that was probably, if you drafted them, you drafted them somewhere around the 7th, 8th round because that was the only way to make sure you got one of those top elite defenses. So, you're probably looking at it, and on your roster, they're the bust. Right now, Minnesota defense is a bust, considering where you probably drafted them at. Uh, and that's the thing. Yes, John Johnson, I think you make a very good point about maybe it's people don't see the leadership skills because he's not a charismatic guy. And maybe that's what it is because he's not charismatic, because he's not yelling and screaming like Tom Brady, you know, uh, that people don't see him, you know, as this great elite quarterback. But the, the trajectory, the way it is right now, the consistency, the way it is right now, this defense that even with a diminished Peters and a missing Akeem Tlaib still managed to, to, to put up 12 fantasy points on a projected 12 fantasy points, which... They had been, traditionally, they had been beat, the defense has obviously been beating projection like crazy, but I said that tonight, I said, this is one of the other things I said, that the defense, instead of getting you that 18 to 20 they've been delivering, would deliver 10 to 12, and sure enough, they came in right at 12 points, which ju just a shade over projection, so I was very excited about that. But no, John Johnson, you're wrong. You are completely wrong. Jared Goff is not Jay Cutler because Jared Goff is a winner, whereas Jay Cutler was a fucking loser, okay? But 
Jared Goff is going to be very successful, and I think we got to start thinking about him as one of those. I think at the end of this season, he's going to be considered an elite quarterback going into next season, and then next season, he's going to suck. But this season, I think we absolutely see an elite thing. But what happened for me is I had Stephon Diggs, which means for Stephon Diggs to have a big night, and I thought he might actually outpace um, Thielen in this game because I thought Peters was going to play Thielen. But as it turns out that uh, Thielen was... Uh, I don't think Peters was was in full Peters condition, and Thielen was able to beat him all day, all night. So Thielen, and then Thielen got injured, and I was like, "Ooh, Diggs is going to really take over." So basically, everybody else got the touchdowns, but again, because it, they they were diminished in the in the uh, in their corners, it was a big passing night for them. And again, Stephon Diggs doubled projection, not quite doubled it. I mean, he's projected at twelve, and he brought in close to twenty. So I mean, but still, beat it by eight points, and a guy that I. Still Said, everybody went dropping him. Everybody was like, oh my God, he didn't even take the field. And that's right. He didn't even take the field, okay, in in week three. And that was, of course, the kicker, Dan Bailey. Everybody dropped him. I think he was, he was dropped in thousands of leagues. I kept him in both my leagues. I said I was doubling down on Dan Bailey. Uh, and, and so, sure enough, he beat projection. He hit 12. He was projected at 7. So, I mean, he did absolutely great. Becky Quad, welcome to the show. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any fantasy football questions, it's nice to have a lady in the uh, on the show. So, if you have any fantasy football questions, please join us. Um, uh, so, and, and again, I, I, again, I think at this point, because of the proven trajectory, Jared Goff, we, we're seeing consistency here. It's not like he had a bad season last year. He had an incredible season last year. But that was a season you're wondering if it's a fluke. It, we now know it's not a fluke. Too many weapons. But I also said this. I said you have to start your Rams receivers. But again, it's proven each week it's going to be somebody else. It's going to be Cooks. It's going to be uh, um, uh, Woods. It's going to be uh, Cooper Cup. And last night it was Cooper Cup. If you played Cooper Cup, you woke up today feeling pretty fucking good. And in my league of record, uh, the Hogs, who I lost to last week, who looks like they might be cruising to another victory again against the lowly Team Nation, Scott Berman and Team Nation, who is, uh, is an absolute loud talk. But unfortunately, he is at 0-3 against a Hogs team that's, that got their first victory against me. But they're projected right now at 160 after 26, 25 points out of Todd Gurley and 40 points. 40 points out of Cooper Cup. What a night that motherfucker had. Um, 162 yards receiving, two receiving touchdowns, nine receptions. That guy was on fire last night, baby. And that's the way it's going to be. And the other guys did well, too. You know, Robert Woods did catch a couple of long balls, but I think he, only, he was limited to, like, two or three receptions. Uh, but he may have gotten a touchdown in there. I don't remember what. I think he did. So that would have saved his night. And then again, you know, when you talk about... Um, uh, Brandon Cooks, he got a couple of receptions, a couple of big yards, but no TDs for Brandon Cooks last night. And so that's the way it's going to be. You don't know which one it's going to be, but you have to play all three of those guys because if it's his night, he's taking you home, baby. But I think because of that, that's why so many of you played him in the flex. Cooper Cup here being in the flex. Listen, man, you get 40 points out of your flex. You feel real good for the next two days leading up to Sunday. But if it's one thing that I've seen over and over and over again, it's the fact that a, nothing evaporates like a big Thursday night lead. A Thursday night lead is a fucking mirage. Now, you do get to feel great for two days about your Sunday. You get to wake up on Sunday going, all we got to do is coast towards projections and we're taking this motherfucker home. And I can't tell you how many times that fails. I don't know what it is. But I, I personally do not like, I like a reasonable lead. I do not like a huge lead going, uh, coming off of Thursday because, again, so many times, over and over, it just turns out to be a mirage that absolutely just breaks your fucking heart, baby. So, 
don't, don't, don't go resting on your laurels. There's still a lot to talk about. Again, if you have any lineup questions, anything, any quandaries going into this weekend, Jason Boyd, thank you for joining the show. Any lineup questions, anybody you want to compare, anybody you want to talk about it, tap it into the feed there on Facebook Live. That's why I'm doing it. We're going into this weekend. It's going to be great. This is going to be a great weekend. And I don't think it's going to be as weird as last weekend. I think this weekend, much like last night, pretty much went according to game script. I nailed the projection. I mean, it's. It, I think we're going to see a lot of more of what we expect going into this. And hopefully, uh, although the big question mark is Tom Brady. It is Tom Brady, which, which, which... Patriots team is showing up on in New England and which Miami team is coming up to New England. I mean, if there is an upset alert out there, it is that one. Yes, exactly. Drink a beer. Drink a beer. Last week, yes, last Tamar, you're exactly right. Last weekend was fucking stupid. Tamar and I were actually at, <laughs> we were at the Rams Chargers game and we go to one of the beer tents that had uh, six screens. They had six of the games on and I see that Minnesota Buffalo game and I just start screaming, what the fuck is happening in Minnesota? But I said it with so much uh, passion and, and concern that people thought maybe there was a shooting it was like people started gathering around the team. I'm like, no, no, it's not an emergency like that. It's not. It's just, it's just, you know, reason has fallen out of play. It's now up is down, down is up. Dogs and cats are living together. Like it was mass hysteria. Uh, Vance McDonald or Disley for the tight end position. And I'll tell you that you stopped. And it was, a, yeah, Disley last week was terrible. But Becky, I will tell you this. I like Disley better than Pittsburgh than Vance McDonald because Pittsburgh is playing the Ravens, who have a much better defense. And as we've seen, it's switching week to week, Vance McDonald or Jesse James. Uh, and Disley has that matchup against Arizona, who is just, I mean, eating a big bag of donkey dick so far this year. So I even though Disley, yes, was bad last week. In this matchup, and this matchup based, and the fact that Disley really doesn't have any other competition in the tight end category the way Vance McDonald does, I, I personally would say Disley. And again, third person perspective, it's so easy for me to say that because it's your fucking team. So at the end of the day, you go with your gut, Becky Kwan. You go with your gut. If you're feeling Vance McDonald, you go with Vance McDonald. But again, they're playing Ravens, a much tougher defense, and Arizona sucks, and Disley has no competition for that role on his team. Um, Yes, Vikings defense. Uh, listen, if you have the Vikings defense, you go right now to your waiver wire and you don't drop Vikings defense, but you drop somebody you're not using a lot of and you get the Tennessee Titans defense. This is a defense that is consistent. Look at their, their point numbers. Let me see if I can bring it up really quickly. Uh, I want to bring up the points for... And Jared Goff, what a night. He had 56 fucking points. Or 65 points? What was it? it was crazy. Um, yeah, it was like 65 points. But let's look at uh, Tennessee's defense. Let's look at their numbers. They've already got 51 on the league. Their number, here's, here's the Tennessee Titans uh, uh, defensive numbers. 18 points, 14 points, 20 points. That is over projection every single week, uh, uh, sometimes by double. This is a, and that was versus Jacksonville. That was versus Houston, a high scoring defense, and Miami, uh, a, a, a team that's proven itself to be very good this year. So if you have the Minnesota defense, you don't drop them, but you go and you get this Tennessee Titans defense. Jason Boyd, Rodgers or Watson, I'm going to be real honest with you, and in my opinion, that's a coin toss. I, I, I mean, I'm leaning towards Watson, and I'll tell you why. Because Indianapolis is still giving up a ton of points to the quarterback position. Rodgers didn't look so great last week, and this Buffalo, okay, Buffalo right now are, they're the X factor. They're the, what are they? What do we get this week? I mean, and that Buffalo defense beat up Minnesota, who put 31 points on the Rams defense last night in Minnesota. So you don't know, is this the Buffalo defense that just needed to wake up with some inspiration because Josh Allen was in the game? Is that what we're going to see? And if so, you got to go with Watson. If not, you know, but if you believe it was a mirage, it was a one game pop, 
you know, just like the Jets in week one versus Detroit, they float back down to earth and they get butt fucked by the, by, by Rogers. Then you got to play Rogers. It, it's hard to, 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 to not go with Rogers at home. And I think at the end of the day, you got to go with Aaron Rodgers at home versus what could be a terrible Buffalo. We don't know. We just don't know. Uh, it, it, listen, everybody, yes, pissing Tom Brady off. Uh, yes, agreed, but he needs until, I, I don't know that he can, even this week, until they get um, that the receiver back, I don't, I don't, I don't think they're going to, Julian Edelman, I, I don't, I don't know they can rebound. And, and with Miami being as hot as they are, uh, Miami's going to be looking to do what they haven't done in 13 seasons. And that's bring, uh, that's bring down Brady in, in uh, Foxborough. Um, <laughs> uh, you're welcome. Okay, so Wentz or Bortles for this week? Unfor you know, Wentz is unfortunately going down there to face that Tennessee defense that I just extolled the virtue of. So that's going to be very difficult. And even though they're talking about Alshon Jeffrey coming back, he's fighting an infection now. I, you know, he's not going to be in game shape. He's going to have to play a few uh, various, a uh, few more games than 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 just this one to come out. He's not going to come out and strike lightning. I, I don't think I've been wrong before. You know, uh, but uh, a lot, but. I, I, ooh, and then Bortles, well, listen, the fact of the matter is, is Jacksonville has a much friendlier matchup. Um, let's see, I'm playing the Jacksonville defense, is that right? In one of my leagues. And so I like Jacksonville. And in fact, they're one of those ones that I see as almost a potential uh, blowout. Yeah, they're playing the Jets, okay? Ooh, but they are at home, and they did suck. They did suck last week, which means they're going to be looking to rebound after that loss. And he was so good against New England. As okay, it hates, I, it pains me to say these words, Tamer. But I would go with Blake Bortles versus the Jets. At, just because I think the Jacksonville defense is going to hurt them so bad that he's going to have plenty of opportunities. And in fact, this would be a week, I mean, to play Keelan Cole and Moncrief and those guys. And Fournette is looking like he's going to play. So, you know, especially if Fournette plays, definitely go with Bortles. If he doesn't, it's, it's a coin toss. But I, again, I'm still kind of, because Wentz is going down there with very few receivers. All he really has is Zach Ertz and Dallas Goddard. And they're going up against... You know, I, I mean, again, it's up to you, man. It's your choice. Go with your gut. I don't want to ultimately be responsible <laughs> if Bortles eats another dick. But I think this might be a good week to start Bortles. This is one of those weeks where the defense is going to get him so many opportunities. He's got to score at least 20 points. <clears throat> if he can avoid, avoid mistakes, which again, you know, he has the potential. What we saw in the New England game, if he can play like that, eh, he might do all right. Um, so that's, that's what we're looking at. Any other questions? What a great time. This has been great. You know, listen, guys, don't play Josh Gordon again this week. I don't think he's up to speed. Again, remember this Patriots defense, one of the most complicated defenses in the history of the world, or offenses in the history of the world. Um, Sorry about that, Viking. Again, that Vikings defense should be a, a winner for you, Tamar. You're just, it's just bad. It's just a bad break. And again, don't drop them. Don't drop them, but go and find a way to pick up Tennessee's defense right now off the waiver wire. They're going to they're, they're gonna be very consistent all season long. I tried to find a place for them on my teams because I wanted to play them uh, this week or I wanted to play, you know, over because I knew that the Rams weren't going to be able to have their big extraordinary Rams day that they normally have. But they still delivered 12 points and ultimately they played up to projection and that's really all I needed to do. Uh, Samantha Rodriguez, thank you very much for joining the podcast. Please, if you have any fantasy football questions, any lineup questions, you know. You know what's funny is also I said Powell in a noon and I was watching the Fantasy Football Live show, and Cynthia Freeland agreed with me about Powell in a noon And I was like, I was like, and she's, you know, the numbers expert, which I was like, hey, look at me. I can get it. Yeah, I ain't got the big computer algorithm skills that she has, but I'm still right on target. I'm still in there uh, keeping it going. Keenan Baker, welcome to the podcast. You play fantasy football? If so, you got any lineup questions? Let's hash it up. Sony, Michelle, or Kenyon Drake? Wow. Woo! Uh, my heart, this, I'm going to tell you it's a coin toss. 
and you got to go with your gut. My heart says Kenyon Drake. Uh, I think he's uh, lined up for an explosive game against a, a Patriots defense that has not been looking like a Patriots defense so far this season. I would go with Kenyon Drake uh, because, again, I think Miami is coming in. Look, they, I think they smell blood in the water. They know this is their chance to win in Foxborough, to break the fucking curse. They're hot. The pa Patriots are wounded, and I think they know it's on their defense to show up and play hard. Uh, you know, but... You know, Sonny Michelle's been looking real fucking good. But unfortunately for me, for me, I, I'm going with Kenyon Drake. Now, listen, if I'm wrong, come back, hit me up. I'm going to be back here on Monday. So if so, hit me up on Monday or Tuesday, depending on how my, my Sunday goes. Um, but, it, it, you know, let me know. But I, I, for me, I'm going Kenyon Drake on this one. I really am. I like Kenyon Drake. So that's just the way it goes. Yeah, that's who you have in there right now. Yeah, I, I I like the opportunity more there. I think there's more opportunity, and I think I think Patriots are going to be looking to sling the ball more than run it. And when they do, that means James White in the swing out pass. So I just think there's more opportunity for Kenyon Drake. Now, when it comes down to the goal line, I think they're you know smash mouth football. I think Gore is going to get there, but you know if it's a, you know I think Kenyon Drake has from 20 yards out. Kenyon Drake's your guy. So I like Kenyon Drake over Sonny Michelle this particular week. And it's it sucks, you know? I mean, for me, tell me what you guys think. Tell me what you guys think. Um, I, I'm, I'm kind of stuck uh, between, who was it? Oh, uh, I have Buck Allen with the Ravens. Or, uh, who's my other guy? I gotta look and see it now. Oh, and also, who would you go with? Matt, I, Matt Breda is someone that I'm really worried about, you know, in terms of, the running back position, um, you know, because of the fact that now they're going to key on the run game down there. They're gonna, hey, Kevin Hampton, good to see you. If you have any fantasy football questions, please let me know. Um, so they're going to key on the run game. So that's what scares me about this week. And I think because of that, maybe they have to do more swing passes. And that's why I'm hoping it's going to be a Matt Breda day. But... I'm really worried about Breda in that particular game. But, I mean, I really don't have anybody else. I have Isaiah Crowell versus Jacksonville, which I think is a very difficult matchup. So I don't like that. And Derrick Henry at home versus Philadelphia. I hate that matchup. And, and, what, and, and Derrick Henry hasn't done shit yet. So I feel like I'm kind of stuck with Matt Breda. Uh, Royce Freeman or Theo Riddick? Oof. Oof. Brutal, Becky. What are you doing? You, you know what it is, Becky. You believe the hype. It's not your fault that you round, wound up with Royce Freeman. It really isn't. Because pre, you know, before the draft, before the season started, they're all on there like Royce Freeman is for real. And I was like, I was like, I don't know. I don't really see it. And the problem you have with Detroit is, uh, I mean. Theo Riddick, wait, where is he going to fit into the equation? I mean, they're running with with Legarrette Le Blunt. They're running with with, with the other uh, someone else. He, he, uh, although, okay, so Denver. Wow, this is tough. You got to. I mean, Denver's versus what was it? Seattle? Is it, no, no. Who is? Let's see. Denver is up against. Let me see if I can remember who Denver is playing. Where are you guys? They're in here somewhere. Oh, Kansas City. And Kansas City defense has been giving a lot of yards. So, oh, God. I, uh, okay. I, I would get rid of both, yes. I mean, if you... <laughs> if you could literally start... I don't know. They're both... Yeah, they're both pretty, pretty fucking awful. Uh, yeah, yeah, I... I'm going to say Theo Riddick because they're playing against Dallas and Dallas is kind of sucking right now. Even though Dallas defense does play much better at home. Boy, flip a coin. That one's on you. I got to tell you, those are, I would go Theo Riddick in Dallas, unfortunately. I would go with Theo Riddick. If I had to go with... We're talking about the lesser of two evils, Becky. We really, really are. I'm going with Theo Riddick over Royce Freeman. I mean... Uh, just because they're up against Dallas, and Dallas looked like garbage last week. And, you know, but their defense is better at home. But, you know, they're Kansas City. But Royce Freeman has sucked so bad. No, change it. Ah, I don't know. I don't think, because I think Philip Lindsay is going to get the lion's share of the runs there. I, I, 
uh, yeah, get rid of both. If you can find anybody, a tight end, go get Will Disley <laughs> off the waiver wire and throw him in there. I don't know. Find somebody else that you can play that's, uh, that might do something for you this week because I hate both those choices. Those are rough. Those are really rough. Let's see who's out there. Let's see if there's anybody sneaking around on the waiver wire uh, in this league. There might be somebody you can pick up your... Yeah, man. Woo! Becky, that is a very, very tough position to be in. Um, so let's see. Getting out of the quarterbacks. What did I just see? Oh. Um, yeah, you want to look around, see who's available. Yeah, Will Disley is available in a lot of... And you know what? Looks like Corey Clement got dropped by a lot of people. I mean... He might be, nah, I, I, you don't know what's going on with Jay. Jay, I don't know. Jeez, this is, you're in trouble. Um, Vance McDonald is out there. Paul Richardson is out there. I mean, these are a couple guys you might be able to get. Um, and I'll tell you what, if he's out there, go out and, and get yourself, you know, somebody good. So, I mean, uh, Austin Eckler, you know, who's sitting on a lot of waiver wires you know, if he's out there, pick him up. They should have a great game at home versus San Francisco, a team that just lost their starting quarterback. So, you know, I don't know. Andy Gold, welcome to the show. Please, if you have any fantasy football questions, uh, be sure and let me know. And I am going to put in a request for this one. So, uh, Rob, what's going on? Lil Rob, what's up, man? Thank you for joining me. Be sure to, again, if you have any fantasy football questions, be sure and ask. Uh, let me know. Happy to answer any questions that you may have. Kittle. Uh, well, you know, that's the thing. Kittle now becomes the big question mark. What's his usage going to be like now that now? Because here's the thing. I think you can still play Kittle. I think he becomes more necessary now more than ever because they're going to need that outlet, outlet pass. Little Rob, what's up, my man? Um, they're going to need the outlet pass more than ever. And the coach didn't change, just the quarterback. And this is a coach that likes to throw to the tight end. So that being the case, I mean, I don't know that they're going to try and change what they do that much with C.J. Brethard. I mean, just because he's in the game. In fact, he played most of last season, so they know what they got. I, I, You know, depending on who your other tight end is, if you even have one, which you should always have at least two that you like. Again, there's some things that, like, a lot of people are like, you don't need two. And, I, and like, quarterbacks, yeah. You need two. And you need to draft two quarterbacks, one elite and one very good. And then you also need to draft two tight ends, one elite and one very good. And so that's like right now I'm suffering with Evan Ingram, but I backed him up. I'm starting uh, Jared Cook in one and somebody else that's good in the other. What's my other one? Um, let's see. Jared Cook and... Da -da 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 -da. Oh, that's where I have Jared Cook. But somebody else is very good. Um, let's look at that team. Uh, so I would say, stay, depend on who's your, that's the thing, Jason, who's your other, who is your other, uh, tight end? Cause it all, it all depends on the matchup at that point. Cause if you have somebody else, oh yeah. So in this lineup I'm using, oh, so in one, I had, I had him backed up with Trey Burton. I have Evan Ingram and Trey Burton and I backed him up again with David and Joku and I win it and I'm playing David and Joku. Because I think he's going to get some big plays out of Baker Mayfield. I really feel good about this matchup with Baker Mayfield. Very excited about that one. Um, even though Trey Burton, I mean, everyone's saying Trey Burton's going to have a great game. I mean, we don't really know. I don't know. I just, I, I'm going with my gut on that one, and I'm going with Njoku over Trey Burton. But right now, I'm actually carrying three tight ends in that particular league. So, um, because, you know, they're at a premium. They're at an absolute premium. I gave up one of my running backs to do it, but he was a guy that wasn't doing anything anyway. So I let him go. It was Peyton Barber. I, de I jettisoned Peyton Barber because if you can't pick up better yards with a passing game that's that electric, then you just fucking suck. Are you were recommending Kittle for Becky on the waiver. Kittle isn't on the waiver wire. Are you out of your fucking mind? Listen, if you're in a league with George Kittle on the waiver wire, then you're in a garbage fucking league, 
Okay, Jason, I hate to fucking tell you, but Kittle has no business being on the waiver, and she was needing somebody that she could pick up off the waiver wire. Otherwise, she's got to try and make a trade, and I don't know if you're in a league where your commissioner is going to approve a trade on Friday that you could take an effect for Sunday. Maybe they will, but for some of them, they want to wait for the league to vote. I don't know. It depends on how your league is set up. I think my league uh, may allow it, my main league, and the other one I'm the commissioner of, so I would definitely allow it if it were me. All right, guys, <laughs> you're recommending Kittle. Kittle isn't available. Uh, so that's it, guys. Listen, what a week. What's going on? Everything's happening. Big week right here. Fantasy football. Uh, this was a great uh, episode. Thank you guys for joining me on fantasy football. Uh, harsh, rea harsh reality. Oh, you're in Eric Seifert's league. Oh, my God. Then that, that must be a garbage league and a half. Holy shit. Roland, thank you for joining us. We're about to sign off. If you have any last-minute fantasy football, harsh reality questions, any lineup uh, questions you might have, thank you, Becky Kwan, for tuning in. I hope that works out for you. I don't know who you're going to go with. I, I, you know, you're... Woo! That's a tough break, but that's the way it goes sometimes. Sometimes you're you you know you're like safe, 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 garbage, 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 and that's when that's when you have to start thinking about trading one of your major players for some better pieces. All right, you guys, this has been Fantasy Football Harsh Reality. I'm your host, Greg Romero Wilson, brought to you by thecomedyinstitute.com. Check that out, thecomedyinstitute.com. If you want to learn the craft of comedy, of course, my master class is available on, uh, uh, for vid on video for download. Thank you guys for tuning in. You guys, we will talk to you guys on Monday.